What's up guys, it's Ryan here and welcome to this complete day of release guide to Big Game Hunter. Big Game Hunter is a way to train the hunter skill that takes place on the land out of time. It requires a minimum of 55 Slayer and 7500 to start. It mixes simple PVM mechanics with skilling to create a dynamic training method. Experience rates of upwards of 600,000 per hour are possible with good execution. Here's how it works. I've put a bait list in the description down below. When you have an appropriate bait in your inventory, you may start an instance by clicking on a bait pad near a dinosaur. You can attempt to catch each dinosaur five times per hour. Getting caught by a dinosaur will end the encounter and you'll lose an attempt. Each dinosaur has one weakness which can be exploited for all five tries in a given hour. The only thing I would strongly recommend for this training method is the bladed dive ability, although the mobile perk helps a lot too, and double surge will come in handy if you've got the money for it. In this video, I'll be using Mobile Perk, Surge, and Bladed Dive, but no Double Surge. Here's what you're going to try and do. In the first attempt of the five that you get, you want to attack the dinosaur with all three poisons to find the weakness for that hour. Once you know the weakness, only use that poison to one cycle the next four dinosaurs. It's going to look a little something like this. When you're first starting out with Big Game Hunter, this is probably the easiest order to do things. That being said, you're welcome to experiment and do things a little bit at a time to work through multiple steps simultaneously. For right now, here's how we're going to do it. You're going to start off by gathering 3 to 6 vines and 7 to 10 wood from the trees and jungle plants around the arena. In a lot of the big game hunter areas, some of the side trees and jungle plants are in safe areas where the dinosaur can't actually detect you, but this is not always the case, so it's good to pay close attention to the dinosaur passing by, and it's something you'll get a sense for after a couple attempts. Because you're close to the side of the map, if the dinosaur comes too close to you, you can generally go close to the edge of the instance and it shouldn't be able to see you. Following that, you're going to craft three wood into spears and then you're going to catch one blue, one gold, and one red frog to tip each spear with each respective type of poison. You don't actually need to test all three types of poison, just make sure you have at least two different types. If neither of the two that you grabbed hit 30,000 damage, then you know that neither of the two is the one that's the dinosaur's weakness, so whichever one you didn't take is the right one to use for the rest of your attempts. After that, you're going to rotate to the opposite of the dinosaur, building and loading three scorpions. Each one of these requires one log as well as one jungle vine, and you don't have to do it all in one shot. You can make half progress towards building it, hide away from the dinosaur, and then finish up the back half later on. By far the most important thing for this step is patience. You don't want to take any unnecessary risks, and although it's good to try and be quick and save time and get better XP that way, it's not worth risking the entire run at this stage. Once all three scorpions have been built and loaded, you should turn your attention to the platform in the middle of the three scorpions. This is your bait pad. Once you've built the pressure plate and you've baited it, the dinosaur is going to fall into your trap. The first time you see this cutscene, all three arrows are going to hit with a different color hit splat. Look for the 30,000 damage. Whichever color hits 30,000 damage is the weakness for the remainder of that hour, and after that, for the remainder of that attempt and every subsequent attempt, you're only going to want to use that one color of frog. Each dinosaur has 90,000 life points. If you use the correct color of poison, each shot will deal 30,000 damage, which means you can take down the dinosaurs within a single cycle of loading up the traps and setting up the scorpions. The first try on a dinosaur before you know its weakness should be the only time you have to make more spears. If you make a mistake, you can go through as many cycles as you need, so if you use the wrong poison, there's no need to worry. Now, for the dinosaur at hand, it should be very quick to finish it off by loading up a scorpion or two, you shouldn't have to rebuild a whole lot, and you should be pretty well good to go. Here's what it looks like if you already know the weakness. In this instance, the weakness was blue, so I'm going to be running around and completing a number of the steps that we went over before in seemingly random order. You'll see me tipping spears, as well as building scorpions, as well as building the pressure pad in the middle, sort of a little bit at a time, so I can continue rotating along with the dinosaur. You'll see a couple times that the dinosaur is able to detect me, but unless the dinosaur's sense icon turns red, there's no risk at all, and it's completely safe so long as you know you've got an escape. In this instance, I didn't really have to use the tall grass or anything, and it was an extremely good run that took under two minutes start to finish. Right at the end here, I'm building the pressure plate, I'm baiting it, and just like that, I'm good to go. The cutscene opens up, the dinosaur gets one hit, and just like that, I'm gonna get my big XP drop, and I'm gonna get my loot as well. For this two minutes of work, I got over 20,000 hunter experience with no boosts. Here are some tips and tricks I picked up on release day. When the dinosaur stops moving, it will begin to move in the opposite direction. Most dinosaurs follow a circular path, so it's easy to stay ahead of them or behind them. If a dinosaur is going through your path, try not to panic, and it's better to try and not move in the same direction the dinosaur is moving in. So if the dinosaur is running north, it's actually better to surge and or bladed dive south and cut through the dinosaur than to run north along the dinosaur's path. There's no real negative to getting partially detected, so if the dinosaur's sight indicator is yellow or orange or even starting to go red, you will be safe for a little bit. Whenever the dinosaur's sense indicator is red for a couple seconds, that's when the instance is going to 
end. So, so long as you keep it in the orange zone, you should be okay. Standing in the tall grass will prevent dinosaurs from catching you. So even if you're about to be caught, if you stop in the tall grass, the dinosaur will pass over you effortlessly. The one last thing to mention is anytime a dinosaur walks directly over top of your character, you will be stunned for a short period of time. You can use freedom to break the stun. Every so often, if you're extremely lucky or unlucky, depending on what you're looking for, you can spawn in with multiple dinosaurs in the same arena in the same space. Both dinosaurs will be pathed completely separately, and they can walk directly over top of each other. If either one of the two dinosaurs detects you completely, you're out of there and you're gonna have to restart with one fewer attempt. If you're able to successfully clear the double, you'll get a good chunk of extra experience when you finish off the second dinosaur, although I don't know if it's worth the time, because for me at least, it took much more than twice as long. That being said, it was a great challenge and I had an absolute blast doing it. This may be the most fun I've ever had in a non-PVM activity playing this game. I've sped it up quite a bit, but this is my run at the double. There's an absolute ton of bladed diving and really quick hiding back in the bushes to make a tiny bit of progress at a time, and it was very, very slow moving. I don't know how you'd be able to do it faster, and if you get a triple, good luck. When you're looking at rewards, you get dinosaur bones, mall components that are super rare, and totems that can be used to boost a variety of activities, including aura cooldown reduction. You'll also receive a plethora of hides and scales that can be used to craft dinosaur hide armor. It's tier 75 augmentable range tank gear, similar to Ganodermic. Okay, and that's it. I hope you all enjoyed the guide. Thank you all very much for watching. Pardon my voice, I'm a little under the weather, and best of luck with your big game hunting.